I'd say there's any one sticking point. I think as we've talked about, this is a 150-page document. It goes through multiple chapters. Some of the chapters are close to finished. Some of the chapters still have technical issues. Uh, we've pretty much agreed on the an enforcement mechanism. We've agreed that both sides will establish enforcement offices that will deal with the ongoing matter. So this is something that both sides are taking very seriously. So you've agreed on the enforcement mechanism. What does that mean for tariffs? If there's a deal, do the tariffs that are in place go away? I'm not going to comment on the specifics of the tariffs and what would stay in place and what would go away. But I would just say uh, we're really focused on the execution of the documents. And uh, as I said, uh, Ambassador Lighthizer and a very large team across all the agencies, is, is we're really working around the clock. At the same time, the administration is now proposing new tariffs against certain European exports like cheese and olives in retaliation for the Airbus subsidies. Why escalate tensions with Europe right now? Well, this is really this is a case we've won on Airbus, and there's there's appropriate response. I think, as you know, the president is very determined on trade. We couldn't be more pleased with the USMCA agreement. Uh, I hope that the speaker brings it to the floor quickly. I think this will pass. I don't know why it's uh, not been scheduled yet. So we look forward to her bringing it to the floor. Uh, we look forward to continuing these discussions with China, and we look forward to continuing discussions with, with Europe and others. These, these are ongoing changes that are just really, really important to American companies. But with Europe in particular, some wonder, you know, there's already tariffs back and forth over the steel and aluminum tariffs. There are constant threats of auto tariffs from your administration. Why pick a fight with one of our closest allies economically and militarily? Well, this isn't really about picking a fight. This, this is a specific situation on an Airbus case about subsidies. That's something that's been, been won through the legal process. Just today, ECB President Mario Draghi referenced the tariffs. He said the repeated voicing of, of tariffs actually does hurt confidence, which hurts the economy. Well, the so do you feel responsible? The president's been very clear with the G7 and the G20 that we'd like to have an environment where there were no tariffs, there were no subsidies, there were no blockage of, of trade. Uh, trade is something that's been very important to the U.S. economy, but, but we need to have fair trade. We can't have one-sided trade where all these goods come into the United States and we can't compete fairly abroad, and that's really what this is about. So I'll obviously see a lot of my counterparts over the next few days, and this will be a major part of the discussions. We are here at the IMF. You're here for the IMF World Bank meetings, where the IMF just downgraded its forecast for global growth to the lowest level since the financial crisis. Do you feel that the tariffs and the trade fights have played a major role in the lowered growth outlook? I don't. I think we're in an environment where the U.S. is the bright spot of economic growth. There's no question that the president's economic plan, tax cuts, regulatory changes in trade are really helping propel the, the U.S. economy. And there's no question that growth has slowed down in China, growth has slowed down in Europe. That will have some impact on the U.S. economy. but. Uh, this is really, this is not about trade. This is about issues slowing down in Europe and abroad. Do you worry about the resilience of the U.S. recovery? We did come off of a very strong growth year last year, but the forecasts keep coming down for this year well, in the, the U.S. Well, the, the economic policies in the U.S. are working, and we're seeing tremendous investments in the U.S. We're seeing lots of capital come back. Uh, we're seeing inflation remains very low. So we're really seeing all the key ingredients that continue to, to have a ro very robust outlook for the U.S. economy. And that's really one of the reasons why we continue to see a lot of money continue to flood into investments in the U.S. Uh, relative to the rest of the world.